This is Join Us in France, episode 281. Bonjour, I'm Annie Sargent, and in this episode of the podcast, I bring you a conversation with Patty Lund, who was really fun to talk to. I think she will cheer you up. She certainly cheered me up. She is checking out places in France where they might want to move at some point. On this trip, she and her husband explored the area of the Béarn and Po because it's close to the mountains and they love snowboarding. It's also close to great surfing around Biarritz, and the Béarn is an area with almost zero non-French tourists, which means house prices are still reasonable as long as you stay away from big cities. They were based out of Sauveterre de Béarn, not an hour from Biarritz, and from there spiraled out and about to several scenic villages, such as Navarinx, Salis du Béarn, no, 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 pardon, Salis de Béarn, Oloron Sainte Marie, and uh, and more, many more that we talk about, and you'll find them all listed in the guest notes for episode 281. A lot of the villages in the Béarn are on the Chemin de Compostelle, which is the Compostela pilgrimage route, which means that many of them have a huge basilica church for very small populations today. That's one of the things that makes them wonderful. Another thing is many of these villages have interesting people living there. She talks to me about one restaurateur that aims to have zero waste. In France, we produce less garbage anyway, but how did she get to zero waste? Patty decided to talk to me on the podcast about this area of France because there isn't much information in English about it online. And I'm grateful for that because it is way too hard to get good and in-depth information about minor travel destinations. The sad reality is that if you want to make a living in the travel blog business, you need to talk about the things that people search by the millions and never, quote, waste your time with places that don't get much search volume. So they all talk about Paris. It could be something really dumb and inconsequential. Oh, can I say this word? Inconsequential in Paris, but it has to be in Paris, right? And as a result, there are a lot of places in France that never get talked about because travel bloggers know they won't get the clicks. And if you're after the clicks, ah. So here's a tip for you listeners. If you're looking for information about a place in France that is not on the top 10, don't stay on the first page of results on in Google. The first page of Google will show you results from TripAdvisor forums or Booking.com. And that's because those sites rank well. But so if somebody uh, uh, in TripAdvisor mentioned Salis de Béarn, for instance, it'll be on the first page. But They just mentioned it. There's nothing there. (laughs) Imagine some unknown person who took the time to write up all this great information about a little known place that's so delightful. Well, that blog will appear on page two or three or 10 of the results because their site doesn't rank. So click on the results on the first page if you must, but also go to page two and three and four and five. Go deeper. Also, Patty explains that you should use French terms, the right French terms, to find local information because there are few and possibly zero sites in English about these places in France. Say you'd like to know if there's a food festival or a local event of some sort. If you use the word festival in your search, you'll find almost nothing. Because in French, we don't use the word festival, we use the word fête. The word festival exists in French, but the connotation is that it's a big event with like maybe 50,000 people or more. So if you're looking for the local village salt (laughs) event, which in English you'd call a festival, they'll call it a fête. So uh, if you don't know what the right word is, send me an email. I'm happy to answer such questions for my listeners, Annie at joinusinfrance.com. Anyway, this is a fun episode and I'll give you my personal update after the interview. And I think you should stick around for that because I might be losing my marbles. Thank you. 
Bonjour, Patty, and welcome to join us in France. Bonjour, Annie. How nice to talk to you. I know. You woke up really like early to talk to me. So, so nice. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to talk about your search through France, but mostly in the Béarn, which mm -hmm. is the area around Pau. Mm -hmm. and, and you're hoping to move to France at some point, right? Yeah, we're looking in like between like eight, nine years is kind of uh, the timeline we've set for ourselves. And so we have kind of certain parameters that we're looking for. And so we're doing a series of trips. This was the second out of three trips we're going to take wow. to uh, look at different areas. So which areas are you thinking about? So our, our, our first trip, we went up to um, Burgundy and uh, Besançon. Up in that area, so we would be somewhat close to the Alps because I have a lot of friends in uh, Lausanne, Switzerland area. Nice. And then all uh, we this this trip that we're talking about here is we went we started in it's basically the southwest. We started up in um, the Saint area, which is in uh, the Charente, mm -hmm. and then we drove down to the Bayern area, and that's all um, that we really focused a lot of time there. And why did you pick? Okay, so so the area around Besançon, that makes sense because you know people up there. And why yeah. the southwest? Well, all of them are pretty much the same the same parameters. So we're looking for something that's uh, with a, you know, decent-sized city. It doesn't have to be humongous like Paris because those cities are like Paris, Bordeaux, and uh, Lyon are too expensive for us. We're looking to buy a house. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it has to be, you know – between like $100,000 and $200,000 is kind of the range we're looking in. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at that. We're looking at something that's close to mountains, like within an hour of skiable or snowboardable mountains. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my husband also, he, he's, he's big into snowboarding. He's also big into surfing. And so he was kind of hoping to get to something that's close to the Atlantic. Sure. And the Bay Iron is like perfect. It's like an hour from that. Um, yeah, mountains, you're, yeah. Spain. Yeah, you're yeah. close to a lot of good stuff. Yeah. But it's not very touristy, is it? No, like barely at all. We were shocked at how little, like, we saw basically no uh, non-French tourists. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, it was really, really rare. But it was really easy to get into conversations with people because they were just like, where are you from? What? You're from America? You know? Yeah. <laughs> speak French. And they were all excited. So it, was, it was really good. It was fun. So, yeah. So you do speak French. I do. I'm not, I can't say I'm fluent, but I speak pretty well and I have no, I have no fear. I'll just talk to anybody. I don't care. <laughs> That's wonderful. So you, you'd be, I mean, are you hoping to move before you retire or after you retire? We're not sure. We're still looking into this. I'm a performer. I'm a, I do a dueling piano show. So I'm a singer and a pianist. My husband is a chef. So we're, you know, we're either thinking of retiring or we're thinking of maybe starting a business there, maybe doing Airbnb, maybe having, I don't know, like an establishment with food and maybe cabaret or something. We're kind of oh, playing that would with be the so fun. Do it in Toulouse. I'll go. I love dueling pianos. <laughs> That's a plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make you play against my brother. You, you can crush him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's never seen, you know, my brother is a pretty good pianist. But he's, yeah. he's never, he can pick up any tune, but it takes him a few minutes. I mean, he can't do it like instantaneously, like some people have seen. And, and he doesn't, I mean, it's not his job. I'll get him to go. I'll get, I'll get him good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he, it's so, I just love the whole thing. My whole life, I, I was raised with a, a kid who can play the piano like that. So we, I'd come home humming a tune and, he, and very soon he'd be playing it on the piano. And to me, it's like witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool he's got a good ear yeah he's got a good ear and he can transpose like if i can't sing it in that, in that key he'll just change it oh that's good he's got some talent <laughs> yeah it's amazing anyway but he knows mostly stupid french songs so <laughs> 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 a lot of stupid french songs anyway uh -huh. let's stop talking about anyway i'm i would love for you to move close to me so i can enjoy your talent um <laughs> i'm trying <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> That'd be great. Okay, so w what did you find? Tell us about the places you saw it around the Béarn and what you liked about them. 
Okay, so we, I had found a couple, I had a really hard time uh, finding information on this area. I, I was like, geez, it's really beautifully located, you know, so many things close by. Um, we, the one thing I found that kind of, I think, uh, started branching me out onto the, into different areas over there was Sauveterre de Berne. Um, I found a beautiful Airbnb. Uh, which mm -hmm. is called Chambre du Pont de la Légende. Mm -hmm. And the Pont de la Légende, which is the legend bridge, is a 13th century bridge mm -hmm. going over this river. And it's, this Airbnb is right on the river, right on this 13th century bridge. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So you have this rushing river going right by you. And then you're looking up at the town. Sauveterre is kind of, uh, it's a medieval city on a hill. And, you know, beautiful church at the top, you know, adorable little, um, church, you know, town square. It's maybe 1,500 people living there. Wow. But it's charming. I can't tell you. We just really enjoyed wandering around there. And uh, it's affordable. So we thought, wow. I bet it is. is. Yeah. Because it's but not – Is how close is it to a bigger city? Um, it depends how big. So it's 45 minutes to the coast. Like the people we were staying with, they said, oh, we just went to the beach today. You know, I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. How long did that take? 45 minutes right around Biarritz area, basically. Wow. So I guess Biarritz would probably be the, maybe the biggest city. Maybe nearby. City, also, yeah. Poe yeah. po is, po is, I think, 45 minutes as well. So. Hmm. Yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of places like that in France that are they stay small because there's no big industry. And yeah. so they can't really, the house prices can't go up too much or nobody would right. be able to afford them. Right. So that would this be is... your top choice so far. Salis du Béarn. Du Béarn. So, yes. No, Sauveterre. Oh, sorry. Sauveterre. Sauveterre. Sauveterre de Béarn. There's so yeah. many. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we really like that, that community. Um, We, there were a couple of restaurants in town, and, and one of them, I just really love this idea. We, chat, we wound up chatting with the chef for a while. She's in her early 30s, and the you know it was one of those places where there's a blackboard, and you get this choice or this choice. It's a three-course meal, and that's it, you know. Mm -hmm. But this, the, the, just the level was elevated and fantastic. I couldn't believe such a great restaurant was in this tiny little place. And this lady, I guess, I guess she... She crowdfunded the restaurant. She got the entire, um, you know, community to come out and give money to start it up. And wow. so well supported. And we got invited to their little party. They had a little anniversary party on the weekend. And so we were hanging out with all the locals, you know. She had a disco and champagne and merguez sausage party. <laughs> <laughs> we wound up hanging out with them. And the other thing is that the restaurant is going for a zero garbage zero trash policy mm. which i thought was pretty great for you know a restaurant um so yeah how do they do that like z i understand low but zero she's going for it she says they are down to like a full restaurant per week they throw out a regular sized house trash bag of garbage jeez that's Im that's amazing i know i know that's amazing yeah i Uh, when we moved from the U.S. to France, I noticed one of the things that shocked me is that the garbage can the city gave us was teeny. It was yeah. probably a quarter of the size of the garbage can we had in the U.S., yet yeah. the size of our family hadn't changed. There were still three of us and a couple of dogs. And, right. and so I was like, how are we going to make this work? But it does work if you're a little careful, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, you and, know. and in France, you can ask for a little bigger garbage can, but they try to give it, like they give you a giant recycling bin and a giant green waste bin, you know, those are big, yeah. but not, uh, not the garbage can. And we produce far less trash than we did in the US. And I, I don't know what happened because we didn't change. Yeah. I guess we must have changed our consumption I habits. So. I I do think we're a little bit more wasteful in this country than in France. And didn't France just outlaw all the, like, the single-use plastic stuff, didn't they? Did, like all the, you know, forks and spoons and stuff, didn't they just Yes. Outlaw? That's really good. And for That's a really long, long time now, if you go to any sort of party, uh, like uh, my husband participates in choirs and things, and if the choir is throwing a party, everybody knows they just bring their disposable. It's not disposable. It's... It yeah. looks disposable, but it's washable. So it's going right. to be your metal. 
it's not the stuff you would use at home all the time. So yeah. you have a plate that's kind of a heavy plastic that you can bring home and wash and right. all of that stuff. So, and if you don't, people will look at you like you're from Mars. Like what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Different mindset. Yeah. So yeah. Disposable stuff is not big. That's good. That's yeah. Good. And they still offer straws and stuff in some places, but yeah. it's not automatic. Right. Like they don't give you a straw with everything, you know. Yeah. If you ask for one, you can get one. Right. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's that's very interesting. That that restaurant. Um, did you give give me the name of it? It's called La Légende. La Légende. Okay. Food was fantastic. It's very rustic. You know, you're kind of sitting in mismatched chairs outside on the looking at the old uh, uh, medieval church, but it's just uh, fantastic. French people love this sort of thing, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is something I try to talk about on the podcast, and I was just editing an episode uh, yesterday, and she was telling me about this thing in Paris where all they do is these fancy uh, cinnamon buns, mm. and I, I, it, I just blurted it out. I, it sh I probably shouldn't have said that, but I'm like, this is so, so not French. Like, we don't yeah. like this is a New York thing where a, a person will. Uh, specialize in just doing the one thing. Right. But can you imagine you're in this little village of 1500? Nobody can just do yeah. one thing. You have to, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. Anyway. Um, lovely. Okay. Uh, where else did you enjoy? Okay. So that was our base. We stayed there uh, and then we went to, uh, we took a couple, you know, we took day trips uh, all around. Um, and so we checked out Navarrenx, which is another, uh, little medieval city. It's a walled city. Mm. Um, so you can walk around the wall and everything. And it's just so charming. It's in fact, uh, I had been looking in all these, um, you know, French real estate sites and I'd found the most beautiful place in Navarrenx. So that's what kind of put that on my radar. Mm. Um, it was a mill with the water and so charming. It was wow. ridiculous. It's like it's too early for us to buy now, but it was just a stunning, stunning little property. Mm. So I'm like, oh, let's check that area out. And it, it is indeed super charming. So I would definitely check that out. They have these cute little signs outside all the businesses with like paintings of, um, I guess, the local people, the shopkeepers and little like quotes about them. I think I sent you one of the pictures of the mm – -hmm. The uh, the priest and it's the, it's the sign in French underneath his face said, uh, "We'll ring the bell if you give me bourbon or something." <laughs> 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 Just all these cute, charming little local things. I love. Yes, uh, yes. Well, uh, in so another silly story. And um, my brother has a house in a tiny town uh, in the Pyrenees, he, mm -hmm. and he's been renovating this house for years. He doesn't live there year round, but the priest in that town is such a hoot. So anytime <laughs> he throws a party, he comes and he drinks a little bit and he wants to dance with people, and he is just <laughs> such a funny guy. And he's getting old now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but everybody loves him. Even the people who don't go to mass love him. You know, he's like, That's, that would sound like my kind of church. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, he's a, he's a fun, um, and we have a lot of people like that because when you live oh. in those little villages, you have to have a bit of a social life one way or yeah. another. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of the things I've, that this, this is a, a good thing to bring up as well. All these areas that I'm mentioning, I believe almost all of them are on the, the Chemin de Santiago, uh, San, Santiago, Santiago de Compostela. Yes, they're all on, almost all of them are on that. Wow. So um, I know a lot of people do the part portion in Spain, mm -hmm. the, you know, the pilgrims walk through the top of Spain. But I guess there's a, this huge section in France that I wasn't aware of. Yeah, there's several sections in France, actually. There are many ways to get to Compostela. And some and of them are, you can, I mean, you know it because it's going to be a tiny village with a huge... Uh, basilica usually by now yeah. it's a basilica it's not a cathedral anymore because they don't need a cathedral the village is tiny <laughs> but, yeah so uh so those are really impressive yeah so we did, we saw a lot of you know the, the 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 shell signs everywhere the little shells that means that it's part of the pilgrimage and you can go in there and stuff so that's you see that stuff all over the place there mm -hmm. um another town we went to was uh Sally de Bern. So one of the things that I do when I go on vacation in France and other places in Europe is I want to 
I, I hope to find a little festival, like a local festival. Yeah. I love doing that kind of thing, especially food, if I could, if we could find it. So I was really searching and also difficult to find on the um, English uh, websites, like sites that are in English. So I started using French terms to try to find stuff. Yeah. You know, like fet, you know, and things, yeah. you know, instead of the, you know, the English term. And I finally found this one in Sally de Bern. It's a, a salt festival. Mm. And it just looked hysterical because uh, the town, I guess, has salt water coming up. They have a spa there, like a really old spa, which mm-hmm. we checked out as well. And they sell the salt. They dry it out and sell it. Um, but these, this festival is crazy because they have um, women, children, and men. They have, uh, you know, buckets of salt water on their head, and they got to wear these costumes, <laughs> run through the town, and, and not spill that much water, but, you know, run as fast as they can. And they had this guy, they had all these guys in these ridiculous outfits, like the, the leader of the whole thing had this huge beret with, you know, there's that little piece of felt sticking on the top. His was massive, sticking straight up in the air for like a foot. <laughs> and it was just super local and super, I mean, no English anywhere, but it was just, you know, there were little clubs within this whole thing. and Everybody's rooting on their favorite people. Right. Then they had a big dinner and we signed up for that and we were sitting with all the locals just having dinner in the square and, you know, it yeah. was just. So you have to have a personality like yours to fit in a place like this, because if you are <laughs> kind of reserved, yeah. it's not going to work out. Yeah, but you can still, I mean, you can still enjoy things because they had a lot of music and, and things going on that, like, there's just stuff we would never have seen. I would never have known about it. I would, you know, it was just feeling like you're really in France. I'm not seeing a thing for the tourists. This is for them, you know? Oh, sure. Yes. So, yes. you know, you just had to walk, you had to get your little sachet of salt for three euros, put it around your neck, and that was what gets you into the little events. And, you know, <laughs> and everybody's walking around with their you know, rosé wine. And it was just, you know, it's a big festival. It's yeah. Fun, right? And and they probably start at 9 p.m. and they go till three in the morning or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and they had, <laughs> they had a, cause you know, the Baron region regions next to the Basque region. Yeah. So they have a lot of kind of, you know, people in and out. So they had a, a Basque group get up and sing and also looking at all the signage all around, there's Basque all over the place. And I never realized how, how far out that language is. It's not oh, yeah. at all close to French. It yeah. was, <laughs> Yeah, that was surprising too. It's very different, anyway, yeah. I also checked out um, Oloron Saint Marie because that's a market town and wanted to uh, also has the river going through there. Also charming and lovely. So there's a whole bunch of just really cute towns all over the place and yeah. it's affordable and the people are super friendly. The food is great everywhere. I don't know. We really just, we were surprised by that whole area. It really just, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just spoke to yeah, us a lot. Yeah, and if you go somewhere that is not full of tourists already or full of uh, foreign... Okay, this is what happens in places like Provence or even Dordogne, is that most foreigners who come into France have much bigger means than French people. Yeah. And so they won't bat an eye at buying some big old destroyed house for a million euros just because it's very large and it has a large it's, and it's pretty and it's got a large you know domain which means you know land area mm-hmm. and they will renovate it because they have the money but yeah. all of these people after a while the locals get a little resentful because yeah. they're like geez none of us can do that <laughs> yeah because the yeah, I- the salaries in these towns are not big. Like these are not, play- they have to, I mean, they have a good life, but they don't make a ton of money. Well, I t- in, in talking to some of the people there, I noticed that because, you know, there were a lot, there were some Brits that had moved there. Mm-hmm. Um, the place where we were staying, I believe the, uh, the owners were, Aust- he was Australian and she was from Hong Kong. Nice. Um, but they had done their you know, darndest to get into the community. You know, they didn't, because they, there are some people that buy these places and apparently don't try to fit in at all. Yeah. They don't, the language, they don't. Yeah. You never do see them at anything the village does. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're completely and utterly separate. So the, this couple just like 
dove right in. You know, they know the language, their kids go to the school, they're, you know, it, it, part of any of the town stuff. So there's a difference, you know. It really it's, helps. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whenever we um, take, so sometimes in the summer we have visitors and our village does silly festivals like that. And whenever we've taken a, a foreigner, there, there's always somebody who wants to get the guy drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so they they will just they don't usually do it to the girls but they do it to the guys they'll just uh-huh. keep refilling the glass and then uh-huh. everybody around they're counting how many glasses he's had and they're like when is he gonna drop come on when are you gonna drop it's kind of becomes a game you know it's entertainment <laughs> Here's what here's what we do in France. <laughs> yes. drunk. You show up, you're a foreigner, so we'll just get you drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry, I keep interrupting you. No, no, it's good. Um, yeah, so basically, those, those that was the major part of the Baron that we checked out, and uh, yeah, all beautiful architecture. All all these areas have beautiful views of the Pyrenees. Driving is super easy in and around all these places. We we checked out your. Um, uh, your episode on the driving. Yeah. Episode 16. So, yeah. Yeah. Which was super helpful. Um, these areas are, are easy. I yeah. mean, except for some of these tiny towns, it gets, you know, some, there are some really narrow bits and some, uh, hills and narrow bits, you know, but you know, traffic wise, it's a delight. Yeah. Compared to, Did you talk about here. Oloron Saint Marie yet? No. What about it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Just, it's another beautiful, lovely, you know, yeah. town, uh, market, um, adore, lovely architecture, also lovely river running through the town. Um, it's just, uh, you know, another charming area there. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm re- reading down your, your, the next line on your outline. You talk about uh, Xavier in Toulouse. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Xavier oh, yeah. is, the, is the cheese shop. That was fantastic. Yeah. So we have two yeah. competing brand name cheese shops in France. One is Xavier and the other is Betty. And Betty has tried to uh, expand and put all of these little uh, succursales, how would you say that? Like they will, they will sell their products to tiny grocery stores in small places for okay. resale, you know, to get, to get the product closer to the, to the buyers. Consumers, yeah. Okay. But as a result, because those places don't sell as much, the quality of the cheese has gotten really pretty poor. I mean, I've told my husband, stop buying it there. It's just not, it's, no. But if you go into Toulouse and you go to Xavier, mm, lovely. Oh my God. And it was the most beautiful cheese shop I've ever seen. It was just, you know, gorgeous and has everything. It was just, wow. That place was phenomenal. And the smell and. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. So to, we checked out Toulouse, I think price wise as far, I mean, Toulouse is beautiful, but as far as like buying a house, I think it, it seemed like it was going to be out of our range. Mm-hmm. For the part. Um, yeah. But Poe actually, Poe seems like it might be doable. Yeah, Bo is a it, is a bit of a sleepy town, though. Yeah, but there's you know there's stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, we also listened to your thing on the um, your your podcast on the castle, and we checked out that. Um, and yes, it is all in French, but they do hand you a thing in English, so uh, that was beautiful. That was totally worth doing. Yeah. Or, no, we really loved Po. Po is lovely. <laughs> it's a it's a beautiful city, that's for sure. Yeah, it's just that. I don't know. For the people of Toulouse, it has this reputation of being a sleepy town. I think, you know, maybe I want something a little less, because, uh, you know, I live in Los Angeles area. I'm in Long Beach. Mm, and it, well. it's, you know, it, it, it's a lot of people. There's And it's um, a lot of urban sprawl. The thing about France that hit us really hard, and I've been there, you know, I lived in Paris in the 90s, and I've traveled a lot through France, but I guess it never hit me because we never drove as much. We always took the train or something. Mm. So this time, these couple times we've driven, as soon as you get out of a city, like, all right, we went to Dijon on the last trip, and as soon as you drive out like five minutes outside of Dijon or, and all of these places that we went to, Po, it was like, you're in farms. You're in farmland. Oh, yeah. Right 
that's for somebody from LA, that's crazy. Oh yeah, this is nothing like LA. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm saying I like. I think uh, yeah. you know, having yeah. less traffic and a little slower pace of life would be nice. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, we we have one or two lane highways, <laughs> not ten lane highways. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just, oh, I yeah. I have good friends who live in LA, and whenever we've been, I just come out of there like. Oh, there are so many people here. Why would you live here? There's too many people, <laughs> you know? This is yeah. just... Because I'm so used to... I mean, Toulouse is a city, but yes. it's not millions, you know? It's, what, half a million, maybe? Yeah, but it's a good size. I mean, yeah. like, for instance, we like, you know... We love French food, but we also like branching out and having different ethnic food. Now, that's tough to do in a small area, you know, True. like a tiny town of 1,500. That's going to be hard. You're going to have to go to a bigger city. Po has some, you know, they've got, you know, some Mexican food, some other things. Toulouse, you get just about everything. I yeah. mean, that's, you know, we had some really good Vietnamese food near the university there, just yeah. like they have an outside kiosk thing. That was really cool. So there's, you know, it, yeah. it's it, there's there's some diversity there. So yeah, the other day we were uh, taking some furniture. Our daughter ha uh, now has a studio in the city and she wanted to change her bed because it was really bad. And uh, when, so we dropped it off and then we went to lunch and we went right by where she lives and we found mm -hmm. this really nice uh, uh, Vietnamese restaurant. We were really surprised. Everything was fresh. Everything was just the right yeah. flavors. It, was, it right. was really good. That used to be really rare in France. And of, I know. And of course, we showed up at noon. By 10 minutes after noon, it was full. Like these That's places great. are not big. You know, you have to... You have to be there right at noon or you don't sit. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, I was really impressed. We, because we don't eat out that much in Toulouse. I mean, we live here. So uh, <laughs> I cook, yeah. you know, I like to cook. But, right. uh, but uh, that was a, a good find for me. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, and it, well, you want to talk about food, man. We ate very well on this trip. <laughs> yeah. You recommend a few restaurants. Why don't you talk I, about them? Um, Because they sound really good. The the one of the big stars, there are a couple stars of the trip. So we always like to go to one fancy schmancy place. Basically, we like to go to one Michelin starred kind of situation. And the nice thing about rural parts of France is that you will find these, you know, two three Michelin starred restaurants, and you, you know the fixed price menu is so much cheaper than in the big cities. Sure. And the quality, because a lot of these guys or girls are trained, you know, in Paris or wherever, and then they leave because they don't want to be in Paris. Mm -hmm. So we went to, um, I, I searched out this place. It's also a hotel, but the hotel's extremely expensive. Um, it's called Les Prés d'Eugénie. Okay. Which is in Eugénie les Bains. Yep. Not near anything, really. Um, so we were, it was maybe, you know, 45 minute uh, uh, drive north of the Bairn area yeah uh so we just went up for lunch and to kind of wander around the grounds as well because it's really just a beautiful property um but it's one of these you know 10 course <laughs> you know wow. situations um and it's just the most beautiful place because you arrive and they have several salons and they say which salon would you like to you know have your cocktail in and you choose so there was like the women's salon the men's salon the uh, the adventurous salon and the outside area and the this and the that you know so I'm like well we will take our cocktails in the ladies salon you know <laughs> and usually these big hotels chateau hotels and places like that they usually have a very nice restaurant, even if it's not starred or super famous because yeah. they cater to wealthier customers Clients. who want yeah. to have a nice dinner experience. And so, yeah. Yeah. And this, uh, you know, a lot of them, they're, you know, they grow their own stuff on the property. They have yeah. this huge garden. You can take a tour of that. They have a cooking school on there as well, which wow. we kind of, why we didn't check it out. And I guess they have another restaurant that's, you know, an informal kind of a place there as well. But it's just delightful. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous gardens and fantastic restaurant. Highly, highly recommended. That's cool. So that's Les Prés de Génie in Eugénie les Bains. I have never yeah. been, so I will go because it's and not the, that the, far. Yeah, and the fancy restaurant, the guy's, the, the name is Michel Guerard. He's the chef and it's the name of the 
uh, the Etoile restaurant. Mm -hmm. So do you normally have to reserve? Uh, yeah, I would. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and those places, it's totally fine. Even if you can't afford to stay there, you can just go for dinner. Yeah. Or lunch. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes they That's serve we, lunch, too. That's why we did lunch. There you go. Um, another, another fantastic, uh, this was just a surprise find, um, in Sally de Bern. Um, we had, somebody had told us, oh, yeah, if you really want great food, you got to go to Voisin, neighbors, Voisin. Uh -huh. So we walked by, we checked it out, we're like, Oh, yeah, it does. It's, it's a, also got, I believe it's got one Michelin star and they have a three course meal. It's like 33 euros for the three course meal, the amuse bouche and the gourmandise, mm -hmm. which is super cheap. That's a lunch, right? Oh uh, no, that was dinner. That was dinner. Whoa. And also spectacular meal. Um, and it's just a beautiful old, you know, half timbered place. It's just gorgeous. Um, and the town is super charming. So you, you know, it's just a, a lovely place to go. We weren't even going to go. We were go going for the, um, the festival of the, the salt festival. And we were a little early. We're like, Oh, and what time is this? Oh, Oh, it's only 33 euros. What? Okay. Let's get in there. You have room. They had room. We went in. There you fantastic. go. <laughs> yeah. That's great. We also, we went to Tarb, uh, very briefly. Mm -hmm. That's not my favorite town. It doesn't, yeah. I don't know. No, but, no charm. No, it doesn't no. really. But we went to a great, if you wind up there, there's in the Tarb market, they have the, the Marché, they have a phenomenal fish stand. The fish was, the fish place was amazing. Called the Pyrénées Marais. If you happen to be in Tarb, that was great. So you can eat, so it's a market that has restaurants. Right. Yeah. And oh, really, really good, and stu and really cheap. So mm -hmm. that place was and that's probably uh, just at lunch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of these, most of these restaurants that are attached to a covered market, are mm -hmm. not open in the evening. Right. Yeah. But we caught it. Just, yeah. Just things were closing, but it was a really good one. Um, also, when we were in Bordeaux, there's another there's a, there's a restaurant I really wanted to point out because it was spectacular. And uh, it's called, I don't know if you've heard of La Tupina. I have not. So this place, um, it, I guess La Tupina in the, I don't know if it's the local dialect or something, I guess, means uh, hearth or, you know, uh, no, it means, um, what do you call the, a cauldron. So when, ah. you, when you get in, there's a hearth right there. Yeah. And they have this I guess they usually in the wintertime have a soup in there that they give you, but they cook all the meats and everything over this hearth. And, you know, we had like uh, slow cooked lamb. They do slow cooked traditional meals over the hearth is basically what they have there. And it was just homey, spectacular. Um, Good food. Yeah. Ma my husband had a macaronette, I believe is what it was called. Hmm. It was like, It was like a pasta dish with like foie gras in it. And oh my God. So, <laughs> Do you remember how that's spelled? I think it's like macaroni, macaron, macaronade. Macaronade. Exactly. Huh. Yeah. Huh? That sounds like and a basic lamb. dish. I'll look yeah, it up. I'll look it the up. The lamb was to die for. Yeah. So. Oh, huh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. I went to Entrecote in Toulouse at your recommendation, which was well worth the line. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a run-of-the-mill restaurant, I and mean, this this is nothing special. It's just a fun no, experience. It's, good. it's inexpensive and it's good, but I, I would just say if you're going to go, go as soon as it opens. Right. So there are two servings, uh, two two serving times, both at lunch and at dinner. So if you want to eat at lunch, you need to be there like at quarter to twelve or one thirty. Yeah. And in the evening, it's like quarter to seven or seven, maybe. And then you can go again at nine. There's yeah. no point getting there at eight. You're just going to wait outside no. for half an hour. The so, but the line—if you get there early, the line moves very quickly. Right. Just and if you and it, because they tend to just fill up the whole restaurant within a few minutes as soon as they open. Right. And then they serve all these people, and then they start leaving. And yeah. then a second a second round of people comes. And then honestly. They, I thought that was the craziest thing for a restaurant to work that way in France because usually everybody sits for a long time and whatever. But this was crazy. It just moves very quickly. Yeah, l'entrecote, people don't go f to to spend hours. First of all, it's kind of loud. Yeah. 
the chairs are not that comfortable. It's not a cozy kind of place. You know, you no, get the steak is good. It was good. It was yeah, good. the food is great. So you eat your yeah. steak uh, sitting on your wooden chair. It, it, yeah. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just a simple, you know, if they give you a cozy, you know, chair with some padding, you'd stay three hours. Yeah. But they don't <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> Yeah, get out. <laughs> <laughs> they never tell you to get out, by the way. I've seen people stay there a long, long time. But, yeah. I've been there sometimes when, like, a table next to us, it, they they finished their meal half an hour ago, and we're here for the second service, and they're just yeah. still chatting. You know, nobody tells them to go, so. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, you had a lot of great... Uh, it's so fun to talk to somebody who likes the Southwest. I'm so pleased. <laughs> I, I had been, I have to say now, I lived in Paris for two years in the late 90s. And then uh, during that time, I took a couple of trips, you know, throughout Paris. And we went to, um, I, I had seen Toulouse and I went to Poe and stuff. Um, but I, you know, I don't have really, like, I didn't have really super strong memories of it. So I really wanted to go back and really take the time and, and check stuff out. So I'm really, really glad we went back because it's beautiful. And I love, I don't know, you're, you're right. That so I, looking through the, um, the podcast, so many people just want to go to Paris. And, yeah. and I'm, to me, and I love Paris, believe me, because I lived there two years. I loved it. But it's not the same. It, to me, it's like thinking New York is America. It's it not. Is. That's what it is. Exactly. You know, it's great. It's interesting. It's You have to see it, but then you really are not seeing the rest of, you're not seeing France by seeing Paris. And so. No, you're seeing Paris and Paris is wonderful and worth it. Right. And, and there's plenty of people in Toulouse who never go to Paris and they should, because it's a beautiful city with a lot of wonderful museums, a lot of wonderful cultural activities, yeah. whatever. Yes, do go to Paris, but don't stay in Paris. Don't go to Paris 20 times. Like. Right. See if you can get out even like, so when we were in, um, uh, Burgundy, we had friends that were staying in Paris and we wanted to get together. And so we said, what's in the middle? And we wound up going to Auxerre, which I'd never heard of. Yeah. And which is like, what, an hour and a half, I think, from Paris on the train? Sure, it's really and close. Yeah, and you're out, you're out, you're, you know, you're in the countryside and it's a charming, yeah. you know. And their uh, central plaza is beautiful. Actually, one of the, one of the headers, uh, Join us in France dot com. The mm -hmm. header kind of rotates. There's yeah. like three or four of them, and one oh, of them is is Auxerre. Oh wow! It's such I'm a beautiful just... town. Yeah, uh, there's there's so much that's close, and you can just get out of Paris and go and check out, you know, something right. really, you know, local and different. But that's why I love doing the podcast because then we get to talk about these places. Otherwise, how would people know? Like. Yeah, people. Most bloggers they write for clicks, and so they don't want to talk about these people that nobody ever searches for. It's it's pretty yeah. much is what it is, you yeah. know. Last week, uh, two weeks, two Sundays ago, I released some an episode about uh, Bello Wood. I can mm -hmm. be sure, hardly anybody searches for that, you know. And and I was fine doing it anyway because it's interesting, and I've had great feedback about this episode. So you just you have to sometimes get out of your comfort zone a little bit and go see yeah. other places. Yeah, I mean, if it can maybe introduce you to a place. One of the things about the Baron that I uh, really loved is you can see the Pyrenees from just about anywhere you are over there. Oh, yes. They are beautiful, and there's great hiking, like, everywhere. It's mm -hmm. just pretty all over the place. Yeah. And, um, you know, and you're going through – and driving is beautiful. You know, there's farms everywhere, and, it, and it's just pretty. It's just a pretty, pretty place. So, yeah. um, And I'm yet glad. we do have some towns that – excuse me – that I will admit are not that scenic, and Tarbes is one of them. Yeah, I agree. You and know, there are, there are towns in France that were just built f f to meet the need – of manufacturing or something. And typically it was a hundred years ago or maybe longer than that, that they needed a lot of manufacturing. They just put it there, built quick houses, whatever. Yeah. And, and it's really not that nice. So I'm not trying to say that all of France is absolutely marvelous. There's places I wouldn't want to go. Yeah. But there's more, it's amazing how many pretty towns there are. <laughs> but really. yes, but we have many more that are very pretty and very ignored. Yeah. And like just a little word about um, Saint in the 
because uh, you know, because we started our, as I said, we started our trip in uh, Normandy with a, for a family trip. My whole family was out, and then we drove south uh, and wanted to check out that uh, Poitou Charente area because yeah. the whole thing that started with us wanting to buy a place in France uh, was watching House Hunters International. I'm addicted to that show. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw this couple, an American couple, and they were in this, I, mean, I had never heard of Poitou Charentes. And I'm like, what? I lived in France. I don't remember ever hearing about yeah, it. It's low and key. They, yeah, they said they wanted, oh, we want a three bedroom house, you know, $100,000. Know, we want a bread oven and this, that, and old stones, yada, yada, yada. And they showed them three houses for $100,000 and they picked one. And my husband and I looked at each other and went, what? That's doable? <laughs> We this is like, not LA. <laughs> right? We both grabbed our, you know, our iPad and we're looking stuff up. We're like, yes, it is doable. <laughs> yeah, of so course we, it is. We really enjoyed Sands. That was a lovely place uh, as well. I don't know if the the surfing is exactly what my husband would like, right? Because there's a there's a an island right off of there ah. called uh, Oloron Saint Marie. No, uh, Ile d'Oloron. Oh, Ile d'Oloron, yes. Yeah, and so but we that's checked out expensive. The- yeah, we wouldn't live on that island, but yeah. there's surfing there and there's there's beaches and yeah. Yeah, I have so. a cousin who lives at Ile d'Oléron and he keeps asking me to go visit and I have visited, but it was so long ago. I need to go back. It's just amazing. There's some, you know, all these beach communities all up and down the Atlantic Ocean. You know, things you don't think of France that way sometimes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, so that was really lovely. We checked out. Um, Saint Jean d'Angely. Briefly, there's. I know there's a lot of expats that live over there. Um, Saint Jean it, de quoi? Saint Jean d'Angely. D'Angely. Okay. D apostrophe. Yep. Angely. Nice. I know there's a lot of Brits that live in that area. Mm-hmm. And it's you found also- you found a really good place for Toulouse because you you have a list of recommended lodgings. And of yeah. course, I'll do guest notes so people can okay. see your whole trip rather than just the part we discussed. Yeah. Um, okay. But the the in Toulouse, you chose to stay in the Le Busca, the area of Le Busca, which is probably one of the it's probably the nicest residential area in Toulouse. So I thought it was uh, it was it was nice for us. It was you know we parked we had a the rental car there. We probably should have given it back earlier, but, uh, we wound up just parking it the whole time. Um, and then walking and biking, we use our, uh, I was going to, this is another thing I was going to say about Toulouse. Um, I know American credit cards don't always work in every, uh, you know, bicycle rental place, but it did everywhere in Toulouse. Oh, good. Cause we rented bikes all over the place. That yeah. was a nice way to get around. Yeah. Yeah. Le Busca doesn't have a, the Metro yet. I think the next line that they're building in Toulouse, the next Metro line, they're building a third, I think it'll go through Le Busca. And then prices are going to be even higher <laughs> for that neighborhood because once you have yeah. once you have a, uh, the metro, boom, prices it just go crazy. The, the, uh, the Airbnb was not uh, expensive. It was pretty cheap, actually. I want to say it was 40 or 60 US dollars a night wow. or something. And yeah. it was my, our own little space. And it had air conditioning because mm-hmm. it was kind of <laughs> yeah. So that was Yeah, so it was Wonderful. really cute. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. now all I need to to get from you is some uh, is, is you playing the piano. <laughs> so send me so send me a send me a uh, an audio file I can play to close the show. That would be so fun. If you okay, could do that. see if I can find something from uh, when I play in uh, the French part of Switzerland. So maybe in French, I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be a fancy recording, you know. Okay, because <laughs> the one I put. The one that closes the show that I did, it's just me holding my recorder with a marching band walking by, you know. It, right, I remember. <laughs> it wasn't anything fancy. It has something, something, something to do with Notre Dame, doesn't it? Uh, no, no, this, this was in my village. Um, they, we have a, I live oh. in a tiny village of 2,000, but we have a marching band and we have majorettes. Oh. <laughs> and so every year they do several events. And of course, I can hear him from my house. I'm, oh, I didn't even know they were playing. Off I go with my recorder. Oh, is that what you did? <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, because they just play in the village, um, and I'm right in the center of the village, so it's oh, it's cool. really uh, it's really very fun. And the majorettes, I took photos years ago of the majorettes, 15 years ago, and their their leader today is the same kid. She's just 15 years older, and she now leads the group. So fun things. 
Well, I just want to thank you for, for everything you do with this podcast because it really helps with, you know, all of our research for stuff. Um, and it's just I, I love listening to it on my, my way home from work, uh, um, you know, and it's just I thank you for what you do. It's great. You are very kind. Thank you. I'm, I love doing it. I'm very grateful for people like you who volunteer to come on the podcast because without you, I wouldn't be able to do this because there's no way I could come up with something interesting to talk about every week. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm not that interesting, really. <laughs> well, I appreciate your perspective because it's helpful for Americans looking, you know, for a place in France. So. Well, and Thanks. also it's you guys have the interest, the important information. I mean, you're the ones who are doing the visits. You're the ones renting the Airbnbs and trying the restaurants. If you live in France, you don't try any, uh, I mean, you do sometimes, but you're not on vacation. <laughs> so you, yeah, No, I know. It's different. You it know, it's different. very different. So yeah. so it's great to have that perspective. Yeah. Thank you so much, Patty. You have been wonderful. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Merci beaucoup et au revoir. Merci à vous. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you, Andrew Hicks and Lachlan Cook, for pledging to support the show on Patreon this week. Patrons enjoy several rewards that you'll find listed at patreon.com forward slash join us. I share exclusive content with my patrons, including help with your French comprehension, stories about France, photos, and membership into a secret Facebook group. And of course, patrons can message me directly through Patreon, and these messages always get top priority. Visit patreon.com forward slash join us, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, join us, no spaces or dashes, to see the different reward tiers. And thank you so much for giving back, especially at this time when we can't travel, but maybe we still like to hear about France. And thank you also, David Clayton, for your generous one-time donation using the Tip Your Guide green button on any page on joinusinfrance.com. David wrote, your podcast is always enjoyable and will continue to listen, though returning to France in the future seems rather doubtful these days, especially for seniors like us. You know, travel sounds scary right now, and I, I really know what you mean. But I think once we have a vaccine... Travel will be possible again, even for seniors and immunocompromised folks. So, But definitely, we need to wait this thing out at home right now and stay safe. I'll continue to bring you a little bit of France once a week, and thank you so much for your support. If you're not sure your itinerary for France is as good as it needs to be, let me review it for you. I know not a lot of you are traveling just yet, but it'll happen again. Uh, it'll cost you 50 bucks, but you get a full review. We go through the whole thing on the phone. I send you my recommendations in writing. Email annie at joinusinfrance.com to set that up and write itinerary review in the subject line. And you can also support the show without spending a penny you wouldn't have otherwise. Before you go shopping on Amazon, go to the bottom of any page on joinusinfrance.com and click on the Amazon ad because you came to Amazon through my site. I get a small commission and it doesn't cost you a penny more. Same thing with the booking.com ad, but don't book hotels yet. Join us in France, but not yet. For my personal update this week, I've decided to stop obsessively checking for COVID-19 updates. This thing is really playing with my mind and I have to force myself to stop it. On Wednesday this week, I felt some chills throughout the day. So, 
Eventually, I took my temperature and it was slightly elevated. It was 37.6 or something, which is, you know, not much. I had just come back from walking the dogs. But when I saw that it was higher than 37, that was it. I was sure I was infected. So I went into full preparedness mode. I charged my external batteries. I charged my earbuds. I made a list in my head of what I'd take with me to the hospital. Should I call my doctor right now? Should I wait until tomorrow? I decided to wait because he always asks how long have you've had the symptoms and, you know, 15 minutes, probably. I mean, it didn't sound like. <laughs> it didn't sound serious enough. But I decided to skip dinner. I drank a whole one liter thing of water because, you know, hydration, it can only help, right? By 7 p.m., I had settled in my bed with my Kindle. My husband and daughter were on the phone, and they didn't notice any of my strange behavior. I had just downloaded a freebie from BookBub, you know, a novella about a woman who struggles to escape from destruction after an end-of-the-world pandemic. And get this, she's trying to survive with her daughters and her dogs, roaming in the woods with evil people from FEMA trying to poison her because she won't go in their mandatory cap. Ah! <laughs> And she has a collection of guns and all that. Anyway, this was not the right book for me right now, but I wanted to know how it ended. So, and the reality is I wanted to stay away from the rest of the family because I thought maybe I'm infected and maybe I'm going to make them sick, whatever. But I didn't want to tell them, right? Well, they were on the phone. They were busy. My mind was racing. Should I just be reading here? Should I be sanitizing every doorknob and light switch in the house? I sanitized the toilet twice because after drinking all that water, of course, I had to go. Anyway, my daughter came in wondering why I was in my bed at 8 p.m. and not in the kitchen. Now, she had been on the phone, like I said, with her fellow master's student working on a project, and she hadn't noticed that I was acting weird. She didn't say, hey, where's my dinner? <laughs> but maybe she was thinking that. <laughs> Just telling her, talking to her about what was going on with me, I realized that maybe I was being a little dramatic. She kept me company for an hour and then uh, went and found her own dinner. I didn't seem sick to her. When my husband got off the phone, eventually I told him what was up. Uh, I told him to go get his own dinner too. But we talked first and he didn't think I was sick. I didn't have a cough. I had gotten only two slightly elevated readings out of dozens. No need to panic yet. He asked me how I was taking my temperature and noticed that I had been using the thermometer wrong. We had a different thermometer before and I, I anyway, this one, we've upgraded to one where you shine the a light on your forehead until the blue light turns off. And I didn't know I wasn't supposed to move it around, whatever. But, but you know, that thing is scary because if you're anywhere be, above 37.5, the, the screen turns bright red, like. I'm surprised it doesn't <laughs> ring an alarm or anything. Uh, and most of the time I, I checked, it was blue, but twice it turned bright red. <sighs> all right, both times it was hardly a fever at all, margin of error kind of territory, but still it turned red. Uh, I was checking my temperature every 15 minutes, which is not normal, but did that stop me? No, I even started a chart. Eventually, I finished the novella where the lady and her daughters in distress meet a lovely young doctor in the woods who saves their lives. I mean, really, why am I reading this crap? Don't I have any proper literature on my Kindle? I opened Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I've wanted to read it for a long time, but by then I was too sleepy. So I slept really well, all things considered, and woke up feeling fine, no fever, not even a tiny one. And I've been fine ever since. There, it was all in my head. I'm telling you, this virus is playing with our heads. Uh, who knew I was crazy? I certainly don't think I'm crazy, but clearly I am. So probably reading better literature and staying away from the news will help. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm listening to uh the Pillars of the Earth right now. Oh, what a good book. And it has nothing to do with the pandemic. So how about you? Is this thing giving you strange dreams and bizarre obsessions? Please let me know. I'm not the only person going crazy right now. Hmm? The dogs are cool. Husband and daughter are fine. I'm the only one with crazy thoughts. So 
So my recommendation to you is stay away from the news, especially if you're checking it obsessively. It's, it's not good for any of us. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd appreciate if you'd share it with someone. Just tell them to search for Join Us in France and tell them, Join Us in France. But not just yet. We're not ready to have visitors yet. I hope you're staying well at home. You're waiting this thing out like I am and not going too crazy. Send questions or feedback to Annie at joinusinfrance.com. Have a great week of trick planning and I will talk to you next week. <laughs> Au revoir. The Join Us in France Travel Podcast is written and produced by Annie Sargent and copyright 2020 by Addicted to France. It is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Mm -hmm.